we back up in this thing yang yang we back up in it uh i didn't do too much this weekend just cleaned my house ate some mexican food ate some barbecue ate a lot uh, it's gonna be an interesting uh time getting this winter fat off because uh I earned every pound of it this year. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I read a lot of books since I'm not on social media. Checked with the news a few times, but really it's been nice not keeping up with the Kardashians, actually. Uh, yeah, but we're back in it already. Biden's people are still questioning his age, worried about the old. Yeah, the old fart. You know, somebody's gonna call me that one day, so I'm not even gonna be mad at it, but people are vouching for him and saying he's okay, even though he forgets when his son was born or died. Uh, Ronald Reagan's daughter's cognitive test for president would really probably be a good idea. I mean, even Ronald Reagan's daughter saying he's old. Um, Rep. Rashida Tlaib is urging Michigan Democrats to, Democrats to vote against Biden in the primary over the Hamas-Israel war. Uh, national security experts criticize Biden's handling of classified documents. Uh, shout out to my heater in the background. <clears throat> Two officers and one first responder killed responding to a domestic violence call in Minnesota. Shooter is also dead. Very unfortunate. Hostage release negotiations possible through strong military action. The Israel president is saying. Young adults are used to living on a financial cliff. I think everybody's used to it at this point. Over 400 detained in Russia as the country mourns the death of Alexei Novani. So Novani was supposed to be the crusader. Let's take a listen. The widow of Alexei Navalny will meet with EU foreign ministers tomorrow in Brussels as she demands the Kremlin release her husband's body. Also today, Russian police are attempting to disrupt memorials for Navalny by removing flowers and arresting mourners. NBC's Matt Bodner is following these developments for us from London. So Matt, welcome. Has the Kremlin, Kremlin rather, given any indication that it is willing to hand over Navalny's body? Thank you, Alex. Well, it, it's a good question. There, there's a lot going on right now, and I think that in its totality, there's an, there's an apparent effort, I think we can say this, uh, by the Kremlin, by the Russian Federal Prison Service, attribute this to whatever body you will, uh, is, is trying to obfuscate, delay, and ultimately hinder uh, any efforts, independent efforts, to analyze Alexei Navalny's body, at least in the near term. I think presumably, legally, eventually, the Russian government is going to have to hand this body over to uh, either Navalny's aging mother, who's still in Russia, actually currently right now running around uh, the Arctic trying to find her son's body, uh, and his lawyers. There's really not a lot uh, of other people still uh, in Navalny's circle still in Russia. So uh, the latest that we've been hearing is that Navalny's mother has been told sometime this week after uh, uh, state officials have had additional time to conduct unspecified tests. Uh, we've now heard uh, uh, conflicting accounts of what the actual attributed cause of death is. Of course, uh, on Friday, that initial statement from the prison service attributing it to a blood clot, essentially uh, saying he just dropped dead on a walk. Uh, his mother reporting over the weekend that she was told uh, sudden death syndrome was what was, was the wording now uh, from prison officials. So a game is being played. What exactly the outcome will be, we'll see this week, uh, hopefully. Uh, I think right now it's very safe to say a message is being sent in the way the Russian government is handling this. I mean, Alexei Navalny is already dead. This is this is sort of torturous, I, I would imagine, for the family, uh, and it's meant to send a message, I think, not to the family, but to Russians, Russian voters, potential Russian uh, opposition voters. Uh, we're just about a month away from a Russian presidential election in which President Putin is essentially running unopposed in a meaningful sense. And so the message to Russians in, in killing Navalny uh, is that hope is dead uh, and there's only Vladimir Putin. And so this, of course, sends a message to the West as well. And I think it'll be very interesting in the future, in, in, in the coming weeks to see how that message resonates uh, with Western ears that are perhaps sympathetic to Putin. Yeah, so Navalny was a Putin challenger. He, he ended up in prison. I forget what he went to prison for, but now he's dead. So there's that. Rest in peace to him. Oppenheimer wins seven prizes, including Best Picture at the British Academy. I tried to watch that this weekend. The only part that I was intrigued with is Albert Einstein. 
it almost felt like this man Oppenheimer was a little like he could see images and stuff but yeah I tried I couldn't get into it Joel Osteen is back in church this weekend. He preaches about living without fear in his first Sunday service at Lakewood. Joel Osteen is like one of those feel-good preachers, so I am interested to see. I might actually play a clip from this on how they dealt, deal with this because he's always such a feel-good preacher. Let's see what else is going I know Trump was selling like some $400 uh, gold sneakers and those things sell, they sold out. Somebody's walking around. Oh, here you go. Coming up, the shocking crash test video and a new warning about our nation's guardrails. Are they strong enough for today's cars and trucks? Also, the secret life of polar bears. They wore cameras for years. What the stunning video reveals about how they live now. America's cars and trucks okay. have changed dramatically over the years, getting bigger and heavier, Stop. but Stop. aren't... Okay, that was live. I thought that was a clip of, of Joel Osteen, but I'm sure they're talking about it. Uh, let's see what else we got on here, y'all. Um, they are not letting Prince Harry back into the Royals. They said uh, Charles is one of his things. He cannot come back. So Harry is considering becoming an American citizen. Would Harry want the crown back? I mean, he walked away from the crown. I mean, you would say for his wife, but making that decision to walk away from the crown is a big one. And his dad's like, I don't want him back. He can't come back. We can be cool but he walked away so I mean although he could be in line to be king one day since his brother is getting closer to being king would he want to would he want to come back Snoop Dogg's brother passed away this weekend you always think Snoop Dogg is just an enigma and he just came here in a rolled up blunt. He didn't even like get born normally, you know? It's hard to imagine he was born and had siblings. But rest in peace to his brother. Tiger Woods is carted off a golf course due to illness, cutting his 2024 PGA comeback short. I thought that man was retiring. Steph Curry beats WNBA is Sabrina, whatever her name is, in the first head-to-head -head three point challenge. A lot of people were saying she should have shot from the women's three point line. Steph Curry's just a beast, you know. I don't think a man or woman could probably beat him in a three point competition. He's that good. I don't think anything, you know. I think it's a sexist thing. Um, yeah, let's go into some other news, y'all. So, what else we got here? Boom, 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 boom. Christian McCaffrey and his wife are on vacation after their Super Bowl loss. That man is is a machine. I hope I pick him up in fantasy next year. Usher says he beat out Justin Timberlake in a bidding war for the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey is hanging out stakes wide while what's her name is uh, over in Australia. Images of the like, Kansas City shooters. I still want to know who their parents are. Those kids had to get the weapons from somewhere. So Sharon Stone was saying that OJ was after her or something like that, but LAPD's like, no, I don't know what this lady's talking about. 
uh, James Wright, who sued Krishan for punching him in the face, she, she clapped back in his lawsuit, pretty much like he ain't getting nothing from her, but a lot of people have already turned on her and said, like, you definitely either going to pay him and go to jail or pay him, but a lot of people aren't buying her, her bad behavior anymore, even though people put up with it so long. Hopefully James gets some compensa- compensation. Offset is at the casino spending all his money, they say. That's what they say. Let's be nice. Here's a picture of Trump's gold kicks for the USA flag. John Wayne, John Wayne Gacy's victim sister blast new series Why Dredge Up the Sad Pass on Peacock because people are obsessed with that killer clown saying it ain't so I hope Travis Kelsey's ex is not sharing this gotta be old because I remember her I'm not even reading that Chris Brown is, uh, he ha- is really tired of the being canceled. So he was supposed to be in the NBA All-Star Game. They had sent him a letter and everything. And then Ruffles, one of the sponsors, was like, no. And it, everybody is saying, like, is it time to forgive Chris Brown? Like, his incident happened in 2009 when she went to jail for it and everything. But he's still being canceled like he still cannot perform on the big stage he was um, not able to perform at the American Music Awards he's not been able to be at a lot of places and a lot of people are are just wondering why he's continuing to be canceled Uh, I know a lot of people have had allegations against him although Chris Brown was found guilty but he served his time for what he was found guilty for Uh, is it time to 2009 was a while ago almost what 20 years ago is it time to let Chris off the hook said he's tired of being stuck in the past for something he did when he was young Beyonce is spilling the tea on her flawless hair care are you guys going to buy it Kelly Rowland walked off the Today Show. She was supposed to co-host, but she did not like her dressing room. I guess J-Lo's dressing room was like a hundred times better. So she was like, I'm Kelly Rowland, baby. And that is not okay. Oh, boy. So a fatal dispute over a $7,000 check, a Pizza Hut employee faces charges in a manager's grisly murder. In a shocking incident that unfolded, unfolded in Wisconsin, Pizza Hut, an employee is accused of murdering his manager over a financial dispute stemming from a $7,000 inheritance check. Kavon Ingram, 31, faces charges for brutally killing 55-year-old Alex Single, whose body was discarded in a dumpster. These pop-ups are just murder. <clears throat> Let's see. In dumpster outside the restaurant, the gruesome discovery was made after South Milwaukee police were alerted to a body in the trash area. Following a blood trail, officers traced the scene of the crime back to the restaurant's kitchen, as detailed in the criminal complaint. Reports suggest that days before the tragic event, Single from Kudahay had cashed the check 
and flying at the cash of his co-workers, including Ingram. This act is believed to have set the stage to the fatal altercation that led a single man shot, his throat slashed, and his body stabbed before being wrapped in a garbage bag, placed in a trash can, and moved outside. The evidence against Ingram includes surveillance footage showing him transporting a garbage can to the dumpsters on the morning of February 5th. Further damning actions include Ingram clocking out for Stingle's post-mortem and sending deceptive texts uh, to his phone to mislead a regional manager. Ingram's charges are severe, including first-degree homicide, which could result in a life sentence. He's also accused of hiding a corpse, armed robbing, and being a felon in the possession of a firearm. This tragic case has left the community and those involved seeking justice. Why would you flash that seven thousand dollars in front of that man's face? So some Airbnb host <clears throat> sent, sent his wife a photo of her cheating husband in retaliation for a negative review. Dang. That's crazy. The startling turn of events that blurs the lines between privacy and policy enforcement. Sean Mackey finds himself embroiled in a legal battle against Airbnb host. Pamela Fowler in Tennessee. The dispute escalated when Fowler allegedly sent a compromising photograph of Mackie with a woman, not his wife, to his spouse, igniting a firestorm of personal turmoil and public litigation. Mackie, who had been lodging at Fowler's property, communicated his intentions to poss possibly have a friend over for dinner, a proposal to which Fowler initially agreed. However, the hospitality agreement soon soured. Parlor's home came with a stringent set of rules, including prohibitions of, on local guests, as well as restrictions on food, drinks, yada yada. A breach of these terms, particularly introduction of additional guests, will result in an eviction. Mackey, she violated this. Oh my gosh. Mackey, you viol Oh my gosh. Mackey, who had been lodging, blah, 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 communicates, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, was, he violated the no party rule, creating a disturbance and hosting the unauthorized guests, leading to his immediate eviction. Following his departure, he sought a refund of 502 and left a negative review in an unexpected twist. Airbnb not only removed his review, but also levied a bill against him totaling 960 for various infractions, including fines for additional guests, noise violations, and contentious review moderation. The conflict took a more personal and invasive turn when Polar dispatched a Mackey a doorbell camera snapshot of him in a potentially compromising scenario with a woman who is not his wife, despite Mackey's refusal to comply with the financial demand. <clears throat> Polar proceeded to send a photo to his wife, leading to considerable, considerable strain on his marriage. In response to what he seems as harassment, Mackey is now pursuing legal action, seeking an unspecified amount, yada yada yada. I wonder what his wife said to all this even still. And that lady came with a vengeance. She's like, you don't pay me? He's sending this photo to me. So it was some killer moms this weekend, y'all. An Alabama mom made her seven-year-old walk home from school as punishment, and then ran him over with her car. She went overboard when it came to punishing him for getting in trouble at school. See, this is how I used to get my kids to act right. I'd be like, y'all see all these killer moms out here? And I'm not going to kill you. But you could be living with me like this. Here's another lady in Pennsylvania. She told authorities she strangled her 11-year-old son because she didn't want him to face financial hardship. Child. Prince Harry has zero chance of returning to royal duties. I don't think he would want to go So this mom, the Florida mom jumped off a bridge after her three-year-old twins were found unresponsive and she got charged. And that this story was so crazy because she killed her kids. But then she had research for two months. One had what bridges to jump off of. And then, you know, 
lo and behold, she jumps off a bridge and survives. Now she can charge where her twins and murder. Talk about punishment forever, man. And she ain't gonna be able to off herself because you know they're gonna put her on suicide watch. Like, lady, you live in Florida. It's just the whole story's sad. Alright, let's see what these reddits is hitting on. Ex-Trump supporters, what made you change your mind? At a time I was in high school, surrounded by people who watched exclusively Fox News. Suffice to say, I found myself a very educated young Republican. <clears throat> I got divorced and realized that my ex-wife was a legitimate narcissist. As I learned about cluster B personality disorders and narcissism, I realized that all of the taxes they use exactly what Trump does. My mom was voted for Trump the first time. She hated the Clinton, and as a Republican military spouse, she became extremely anti-Trump after January 6th. She was losing faith in him and leaning up to the point, but that was definitely the biggest breaking point. She now argues with her friends who still support him. A lot of people are saying January 6th. What is something that Americans are actually very good at? We're very good at eating. We're eating like nobody's business. Somebody says small talk. I hate small talk. In all honesty, Hollywood, America's the world famous for that movie. Although a lot of our actors are not Americans anymore. The Americans with Disabilities Act it has made life so much nicer for folks. Military logistics. Jazz, rock and roll, basketball. I mean, our sports are top tier, even though most people say they're rigged. National parks. Barbecue, yeah, food is ball. Driving. Some Americans would beg to differ because we do feel like some of our states can't really drive. If you could do high school all over again, what would you do differently? I, pro- I would definitely pro- uh, apply myself more. Then I'd go into something that actually, like, I knew was going to turn me into a genius. Not get in a relationship and just enjoy the experience. Apply myself more. Have confidence. I call people out more and not be a doormat. <laughs> Somebody said, please, God, don't make me do it again. I used to have this dream that I didn't graduate and I had to go back to school. I had that dream like so much. And I hate that, especially when you think you're leading parallel lives. And somewhere in life you're like stuck in a loop. And what if in that life I didn't graduate high school and I had to keep that going back? I was stuck. Stop trying to get popular kids to like me and just do my own thing. Not take so much acid. <laughs> Not worry about grace so much and pursue hobbies. Yeah, right. Not with the parents I had. There's something you love the sound of. Rain. I love a little wind. Waves, yes, the sound of the ocean is beautiful. Vacuuming in it. Water. Water sounds good to you hear dripping in your house. It's 
down the rain, snowfall, cat purring, I don't like that. Ice cubes banging together in a drink. Nice cold drink with some ice cubes, it's nice. Wind chimes, I hate wind chimes. Whipped cream being sprayed. That's how you know you're greedy that you like the sound of whipped cream. Lawnmowers? Don't think so. But I do like the sound of my husband doing chores, so I guess I let all the calculates the same. A lot of these are <clears throat> repetitive questions. Some of them are goofy. Crazy world star. This is the videos we're stuck with, y'all. Now that we don't have the old social media anymore. Let's see what we got. Uh, this was crazy. So this judge, she shot her ex-boyfriend while he slept. It's crazy. Let's see. Court documents say Magisterial District Judge Sonia McKnight shot her ex-boyfriend in the head while he slept. He's been left blind in at least one eye, according to authorities. McKnight is accused of attempted murder and aggravated assault. She was unable to post $300,000 bail, according to court records. Police say McKnight's ex-boyfriend had recently broken up with her and wanted her to move out of his Susquehanna Township home. Around 1 a.m. Saturday, police say McKnight's ex-boyfriend awoke with massive head pain and was unable to see, while she allegedly asked him, what did he do to himself? The ex-boyfriend was adamant he did not shoot himself. Police say while calling 911, McKnight could not explain what happened and that she was sleeping and heard him screaming. The investigators came to the conclusion she pulled the trigger. The location of the wound being one of the big uh, factors here, uh, a, a gunshot wound to the head, um, pretty clearly gives you a... Um, indication of someone's intent so the, the charge is appropriate we believe police said a gun registered by mcknight was used in the shooting and that a license plate reader and ring doorbell footage contradicted part of mcknight's accounts of the evening leading investigators to say her interview was deceptive additionally an investigating officer wrote in charging documents that mcknight tested positive for gunshot residue on her hand McKnight was already suspended for unrelated reasons prior to this. A state judicial conduct board had alleged a number of counts of misconduct by McKnight that led to her suspension without pay. Tom Lee, WGAL News 8. Now then, Judge, no, she got to get rid of that gunshot residue. More 
people are saying Eddie uh, Shannon Sharp is gay. Poor, poor uh, Shannon. I can't call it though. Listen, Shannon is popular. He is going to be getting a lot of hate. That comes with the territory. This girl had like a mental health crisis on social media, destroyed her whole little apartment. I'm sure laying the points. And I'm taking the over. They got everything. Except the big man. There's no rule for the big man in the... If you see me walking down the street and I start to cry each time we meet. get a copyright strike for playing this stupid video of this girl attacking her closet that she has ADHD and bipolar even when I will try to get copyright strikes this is what happens to me uh this dude this drunk dude gets clowned by his friends while he was being sexually assaulted by a white woman
Oh my goodness. Hey, 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 yeah, boo, ba da ba, ba da ba. Do, ba do, ba do, ba do. channel gonna be down this lady literally she really did take this man's family jewels while he was passed out drunk oh, this stuff be crazy y'all what is happening in this world who else is on here y'all Here's this inmate is giving his tour of his cell. Just in case y'all get locked up. Y'all can probably have a nice place to stay. He got a shelf. He got TV. Posted up. Lamps. Posters. Pots and pans, tablets. They living it up in there, I ain't gonna lie. And the rent is free. He even got his own bathroom, so he got a really nice cell. He doesn't have the old everything's in one place. And he got his own room. How you do that? Wow. I'm so tormented by it that Mardi Gras thing I just saw. So this homeless man was found living in an abandoned $10,000 penthouse. I always wonder that about people like when you're homeless you could just go live in all these empty places. I mean all they could do is what kick you out put you in jail for trespassing. Found a homeless person living in an abandoned $10,000 penthouse. Brew, it's nicer than my penthouse. This bathroom was updated recently too. Like half the skyscrapers here are abandoned. Yeah, they have all these abandoned buildings and penthouses. I mean, let the homeless people have it till y'all ready to tear it down. This guy learns that his marriage is over. Another judge having him break down. I have been married for 51 years. Got two sons, 42 and 40. Them deadbeats. <laughs> I'm still supporting the little boogers. Needed to take a test to see if any of us had a kidney good enough for my brother. <laughs> Found out something interesting. They ain't my kids. There's somebody else's. <laughs> of course, the only good thing is, I know it's not my fault that those two idiots got dumped into this world. Hell, I thought they took after their mother. 
did. They take after the plumber or the postman or the milkman. Or, yeah, there were milkmen back when they came around. I mean, God only knows. It sure gets old. I do wish I knew who the real fathers were. And they ain't the same. She was bumping a couple of different guys. But if I could figure out who they were, I've been practicing law long, long, long enough that I pretty well figure I could sue their ass and get all my money back that I sunk into those two dead meat. It just chaps my ass that she couldn't tell me. I'd probably forgiven her. Maybe not. You know how it is. Hell, yeah, boys, y'all need to go get your own paternity test. You can't tell how by looking who's the daddy. Unless you're looking down at the genetic level. I've been in court thousands of times in paternity suits. And four out of five times... Guy says he ain't the daddy, he's right. Mm. And the genetic test are the only way to prove it for sure. These women are hopping everything that looks fun. You thought you liked sex. <laughs> you ain't nothing. <sighs> well, I, I guess that pretty well completes that story. go home, start drafting up some divorce papers, see if I can't get free of that crazy bitch. Mm. I mean, I stayed with her for the sake of the children, and the grandchildren, and now the great-grandchildren, but they ain't no kid of mine, fuck them. He said, F him. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. Autumn, te- autumn times, he did the paternity test of the judge. He never thought maybe it could be me too. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still traumatized by that movie, that video we just saw. But listen, it's Monday. And this is how it's starting off. What a week. Have a blessed, blessed week, y'all. Stay strong. I pray God's hedge of protection over you guys. That everything y'all touch, y'all bless when y'all going in, y'all bless when y'all coming out. Stay strong. We can do it.